You all became teachers, right? It wasn't some of your plans. But then suddenly the whole entire, this, the whole school system went, can you teach your kid? No, I can't. I can't teach him anything. I have a master's degree. Do you know what? The only thing that's stuck in my head with all the learning I've ever done, carry the one. First to 12th grade. It's literally the only thing that's stuck for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know how to spell all the theirs. I think there should be one spelling. It just seems like too much work to figure out all the different ones. And I'm sick of giving people that pride who, who correct you. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of giving them a win every time I try to post something and I misspell something. It just should be a symbol at this point, right? So now you're trying to figure it out, right? And we gave every kid in, in, the, in the US uh, just a sub during COVID. Just through like a, a sub, not like a sub, like that's a bad thing, or sub as a teacher. Remember when your school system couldn't find a sub? Here's how you knew. is when you walked into class and you saw a cart with a TV on it. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. A cart with a TV? Man, I'm making Chinese throwing stars all day. <laughs> I'm gonna make so many footballs all day. You hit that top loader and that British guy told you about penguins, you're like, yeah, right. Van Halen symbol, all day. So, right? So, so now you as a parent, you're sitting there going, okay, so I'll do my Zoom meetings here. By the way, um, I had to do a couple Zoom comedy shows during COVID and I, I still feel to this day, Part of my soul, I don't know how you get your soul back <laughs> or what you have to do to get some of your pride back, but it's gone. <laughs> right, the first one you did, you're like, I'll do it. What's it like? I did one Zoom show. I did the whole thing exactly how I thought I was supposed to do it. It was like, the, some of the, like one of the first ones when no one really knew. I'm talking, I'm talking. And then when I get done, this, I just hear a voice, sir. And yeah, he goes, we... We've been in the lobby. I go, I just, I just did 20 minutes, of, like talk for 20 minutes, did anybody hear it? No, we, we lost connection. I go, I go, why didn't you, why didn't you tell me? He's, and the kid just being nice goes, I just thought you wanted to practice. <laughs> Part of my soul just flies away right there. Know what I realized they need on those Zoom things? They need a pedal to get you out of the Zoom. When you're like, later, and you hit a button, bam, you're out. Because none looks dumber than you trying to <laughs> click out after you think you did. And also I realized when you get introduced, it's dumb because we see you. Everybody sees. So if they're like, hey, Janice from, from you know, HR, and they're like, hi, Janice, hi. Is that your cat? Yeah, it's Pepper, <laughs> right? It's like, it's a weird, there needs to be like a two second pre-roll of you, like every sporting event. They're like, Janice from accounting, and it's just a picture of like, Janice going. <laughs> right, you can do, and it's Derek from shipping. <laughs> so you're all stuck, right, in this house, and now you as a parent, you have to do your Zoom meetings here, and then you as the other parent have to do your Zoom meetings there, and then you've got a kid, you're like, okay, you do your classes in that corner. Fifth graders, you do your stuff in there. Uh, living rooms, that's where we'll have assemblies. <laughs> I'll build a shutout back for us new teachers where we can sit out there and smoke going, fuck these kids. <laughs> oh, they're doomed. We should drive them right to juvie right now. <laughs> I was actually at a friend's house when his son, who was about to go away to school, came to tell him that he wasn't going away to school, right, because of COVID. And those two did not get along, right? That's just as parents, this, my, my buddy had a, a little check mark of when his son was gonna leave. And they had that kid's room air beat and bead. <laughs> like the hour after the kid leaves, right? It was all planned. And that kid comes into the room where we're in and he goes, I just, I just go to 
Word. Word. Huh. I, I just got an email from, from school. I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to go to school or something? I don't know. People are coughing or something. I'm not supposed to, I'm supposed to stay here. Wait, what are you saying to me? I'm not, I'm not supposed to go to school. But I just spent $20,000 for your dorm and your food. Do, do you know if I get, get that back? I don't know. Is that something you can figure out? It's your money. <laughs> Why do I gotta figure it out? You ever talk to a teenager, for some reason, none of these muscles on their faces, like, none of these muscles work at all. They're just like, and then anytime you tell the teenager to do something, their body flinches. <laughs> like you're tasering that kid. <clears throat> hey man, can you get the trash can to bottom of the driveway, put it in the garage for me, please? <clears throat> what? Why do I gotta do it now? What? I wasn't even going outside. I don't even throw things away. I remember when I started performing live again, I was so excited. It's all I wanted to do, right? Because you're a comic, you're sitting home, talking to all my comic friends, going, oh man, where are we gonna do live shows again? People are doing shows in parking lots and on roofs, and then we're like, there was everywhere, you're just trying to figure out, like, right, bastardizing comedy, just having it happen anywhere and anything. Hey, you got this gig, it's in a pool, everyone goes underwater, and then you do like five minutes. However long you can hold your breath, that's what your set is. You're like, ah. I'm like, well, I got this gig, you're in a hot air balloon with a speakerphone, and you just kind of, with the megaphone, and you just yell at the cities. It pays like 50 bucks for like an hour. And you're like, I haven't seen a check, I'll do the balloon gig, right? It got sad. So I remember like once I started performing live, uh, it was, took me about a week like, I had about a week of, oh, yes, I'm fine. I'm performing live again. And then by week two, everything that bugged me about everything came right back. <laughs> like, I didn't even miss a beat. There's so many things that bug me just as a comic now. Uh, one, temperature of a comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. Um... Uh, another one, it, and it hasn't happened at this place at all, so I'm not saying it, but some clubs you go to, the, the servers are louder than the worst hecklers, right? So you're kind of battling that, right? And then, then they take the beer bottles, and as you're talking, you hear them in back playing cornhole. <laughs> but they, you just hear smash, smash, right? <laughs> I did a show back and I was pretty rusty where I was even nervous about what material I was doing because I hadn't performed in a very long time. And I get on stage, I'm trying to figure out my life. There's a woman sitting almost like front row. It was, wasn't you, but you're like right there. If you were to put together an arch villain of a comedy club, she was everything possible. You know what I mean? Like she was like a one person Bachelorette party at 12 in one person level of annoyance, right? Like after every joke she co-signed, which means that I'll say something and then she has to either yes or no it. I don't do that. I don't have a farm. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's hot in here. I don't think it, right? She's the person on Facebook who has to comment under every post. Sometimes you can keep scrolling, right? So, so she's commenting after everything I say, and it was just kind of getting annoying. And then she was eating loud enough for me to hear her. That, w that was making it almost impossible for me to, sh so I'm literally performing like this, <laughs> Corner, right? And she's slurping, and the whole other time, she's also like this. I see her hands just doing this as she's slurping, as she's doing this. And I'm like, what is okay? This lady, she's eating. <laughs> And she's just, just this look on her face, but it was, you know, it was COVID, so I'm like, well, she, she, maybe she hasn't eaten around people. <laughs> like she's feral, right? <laughs> maybe this woman would like lived in the woods and they're bringing her into society and this is how they're kind of showing her. This is how humans are, right? Don't bite anybody, like, so. 
she slurped it, and then she takes the wings, and here's what makes me crazy. She gets the plate of wings that she has, and she set it on the stage. Okay, I, the rage that I had, I wish I could have bottled it up, because it was, in case anybody ever stuck underneath a bus, I would be able to go honk. Especially if my, my spanks on, I have a little extra push. Right, have a little thing, right? So she sets it there, and all I want is like this, the, the speaker system just to fall <laughs> and kill her. Like, I wanted her dead, you don't understand. I wanted her dead. I've done shows in front of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. She's one dead, I don't. That's a good ratio. I only, I, I only kill .00001% of my fans. That's a good, that's a good ratio, right? But I wanted the speaker to kill her, and this, right before she dies, I just wanted to lean in and go, because you're a horrible person. That's why this is happening to you. She's just a low-watt human being. Some people are just low-watt. They're not turned off, but you get that dimmer and you turn it as low as it can, enough where it hums, you hear humming. So the bulb's not off, but it does nothing. It just brings everybody darkness that comes in contact with you. That's what she was, a humming, low light, watt human being, okay? Little extreme, okay, I get it. But anyway, so then <laughs> I go to say something to her but I had to look at her husband first because it's a new thing of comedy. Things are weird, right? Now you, audiences, you used to be able to just yip yap at an audience and you just listened. If you didn't like what I was saying, you would just stare at me like that. If you liked what I was saying, you would just do that. But there wasn't a thing, right? You didn't go, ooh, he shouldn't be talking. Like audiences now think that comedy is a choose your own adventure. <laughs> that you have a say on what the comics are saying up here. That's not how it works. That's not how this whole thing's set up, right? So I had to look at the husband, because I'm gonna tell this lady, I'm gonna, I give her a little point. So I'd look at the husband to see, is he big? Is he gonna come up? How much am I fighting, <laughs> right? And I looked at him, sized him up quick. He had a winter, he had a winter Marlboro Lights jacket. <laughs> Showed me, proved me one thing. He smoked enough to get a free winter jacket. <laughs> That's all I need to know about him. He's got about two seconds of air in that body. I just, I just, gotta, I just gotta move around a little bit with that guy. Just, right, I'll do one of these and one of those. He's <laughs> right? So I'm not worried about that guy. So I go to his wife and I'm ready to just rip into her and she's wearing this light blue sweatshirt that has Eeyore. Right? Now listen, grown women wearing Disney store clothes, whole nother conversation I don't feel like having. But she's wearing, she has an Eeyore sweatshirt on, and every time I went to say something to her, all I thought was, why bother? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, Christopher Robin, I just would like to hit her with a smack roll of honey. <laughs> Freak what day is it today? It's we killed the lady in the front row, Pooh. Oh, that's my favorite day. We will kill her, then I'll deal with the rumbling in my tummy. 